we have I welcome you to this part two of the mystery of preparation. Preparation is key, it's absolutely important. When you have not prepared, you have already prepared to fail. When you have not planned, you have planned to fail. So God believes in preparation, and that is the way it works. If you are not yet ready to prepare, then you are not really ready to see the manifestation of God. God does not just wake up and do anything. He sees the end from the beginning. Before he does anything, he sees down to plan. He sees down to plan. He communicates the plan. And that is the way it works. I pray today that you will encounter God specially in this program. This is a mountain of multiple encounters. That's what it is. That's what this program is. For you to encounter God, to assess and to possess your inheritance in him, to possess, to assess and to possess your glorious redemptive color and dignity in him, so that you live your life on earth, riding the clefts of the Holy Spirit, riding prosperously in majesty. And this program is set not to whip up your appetite or material things, but to whip up your appetite, the hunger and the thirst for God, the more you go into God, the more your root goes downwards in God, the more your fruit will come out. So you, your heart is not set on materialism because materialism has crept into the church so much, so much that people are depressed, people commit suicide. When people are not getting the houses, the cars, the clothes and all that, they are discouraged. They think that's what makes for good Christian living. No, it's not. So they are depressed and most of the time you see them committing suicide. Great discouragement and depression because their hearts are premised on materialism and not on God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, you say, Seek you first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things. Those other things are secondary. It is God to add them unto you. They shouldn't be things you're chasing. And that's why people are discouraged. That's why people go to do all manners of rubbish. Cheat, lie, to get all these things and to prove their testimony. Sir, the testimony is not the house. Thank God I live in a very big, comfortable house. The testimony is not the house. Thank God I have very good ones. The testimony is how did you get them? That is the real truth. Because if you cut corners to get them, you're in trouble. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 11. He said, he that gets that which is not his or her right, number one shall end like a fool, number one shall die untimely. That is the way it is. The end of a thing is better than the beginning thereof. That's what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8. So though your beginning may be small, but your later end shall greatly increase. Job chapter 8 verse 7. That's how God works. So you must keep yourself, get yourself in tandem with God. Prepare with God. And to make sure as you're having these genuine encounters with him, your heart is with him. Your appetite is for him and not on materialism. So that you are growing in him. Every day you're being changed. And when you're being changed in God, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, you are not changed for the worst, but for the best, from glory to glory. And that is the way it was. You have this continuous progress in God which is clear in Proverbs chapter 14, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. The light of the righteous shineth better and better. The path of the righteous shineth better and better. Better and better until the perfect day. Not roller coaster. Shine better today, tomorrow, another story. Once you come in alignment with God, seeking God first and his way of life and his constitution, sir, your life shall be full of light. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2, verse 22. If your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. He said the eye is the light of the body. So if you are focused on God, then not on things, not on car, not on houses, not on the airplane, not on the jet, not on whatever, but on God, seeking God, promoting his kingdom his, and his interests, then your interest will matter before God. Making God a priority makes heaven to make you a priority. And then heaven will begin to decorate you with those things others labor for and seek. 
and it will come to you sweatlessly. And that is humility when you know it is not you, that it is God. You look at Luke chapter 22, verse 35. He said, when I sent you and you went, did you lack anything? No. But I told you not to carry uh, money, not to carry anything. But you went and I supplied you. Why? Because when you begin to seek God, you know that it is God that supplies you. You are not operating on the Babylonian system that is on edge today. My hand has gotten me this. You are, I. You watch when people are sharing testimony, you see that thing running. I. I did this. I did that. My dear, what you did, many people have done bigger than that and they didn't get anything. Just hear that. It is by God's mercy. The race is not to the swift, neither the battle to the strong. Or meet to the one that thinks, oh yeah, no. He said it is opportunity and God's timing and God's mercy that happens to human beings. You are what you are by the mercy of God and nothing more than that. So there is nothing to glory about. John chapter 3 verse 27, a man received nothing except to be given to him by God. That's the way it works. It's only God. Whatever you have, it is God. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. So once you can understand that you're seeking God and God is added, so whatever you have may not will not touch you. It will not go to your head. You will be humble before God. Somebody's talking about my father. He said, your, he said, sir, thank you for making me to know your father. He said, he's the most humble man I've ever met in my life with all his accomplishments. And yet he talks with so much humility. Why? Because he knows it is God. He is a God chaser, not materialistic person. And that is the way it is. I pray you have genuine encounters with God in this program. The encounters with the Holy Spirit is mountain of genuine encounters where your laughter comes full, where God enlarges your coast as you hear divine secrets and get the key, the key, the key. Because that's the important thing, getting the key of the kingdom. Because once you have them, it's no longer gets worked. You know what to do. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. It says the labor of the foolish disturbs every person. Why? Because he does not know how to get to the city. He doesn't have the key. And if you don't have the key, no planning, nothing, then you are a fool. I pray that that appellation of foolishness will, be, will disappear from your life. That you enter the realm of planning, you enter the realm of strategic thinking. Planning comes from the spiritual realm first, for then the mental realm. He says in Luke chapter 14, verse 28, who is it that wants to build a tower without sitting down first? Sitting down first to think, to plan. As he starts and he will not finish, he becomes a mockery. Before then you begin to walk. If you walk without planning, then you are in trouble. So get this understand. We explained that in the first segment. Do so I want you to know clearly that God is a planner. God is a strategic thinker. God does not do anything without planning. And God communicates his plan. He's, he doesn't joke with it. That's why Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, he says, write it down so that he that reads it can run with it. That is the way it works. So God wants anything plain. He said the vision shall speak. It has an appointed time. It never speaks at the beginning, but it will speak at the end. That's the important thing. It speaks at the end. Anything when you plan very well, you will see it speaking at the end. You don't plan very well, you see it speaking negative things at the end. It is your choice. God plans. Let's look at something about God in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. He said, and God said, let us make man in our own image. Wow, planning, communicating the plan. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. God is a planner. Verse 27, so God created. He did not start creation until he planned and until he communicated it. Planning is key. Don't start anything. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So God is a planner. So you must take after God, the author and the finisher of our faith. 
Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 he said looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith he authors he's a planner he begins and he finishes he accomplishes the plan who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despite the shame of the cross that's the way it works any planner is never misdirected or diverted out of that except if God interrupts and like I said in the segment one when you plan you break them down in short goals it gives so much satisfaction in 24 hours this is what I accomplished sleep for so so hours pray study the word creative values this work this just let 24 hours employ you and at the end of each day you find so much joy that you had accomplished so much once you allow 24 hours to employ you you begin to plan your day one step at a time sweet jesus that's all i'm asking of you one step at a time one day at a time before you know it in one year in one month in six months you have led a planned structured life so nobody can budge in on you anyhow it was in lowly god that is allowed to interrupt it and bring it to his focus maybe you're planning if it is out of god's focus because proverbs chapter 16 verse 25 and proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 says there is a way, there is a plan that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So that's the way it works. God can interrupt, but let God meet you doing something. Then you're just lousing about. Amos chapter 6 verse 1, Woe unto them that are is in Zion. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29, He says, Seest thou a man diligent in his work, in his work, he shall not stand before mean men, but before kings. So God rewards the diligence. Diligence is giving your best. Sacrifice is beyond your best. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. That is the way it works. I pray that beginning from today, you will plan. You will plan with God. And then you will see the results of great planning. Beloved, planning is key. Sit down. Plan. In a day, what time to pray? What time to study the word? To get inspiration. What time to do this? What time to do this? And all of them, all your planning must have eternal value as the foundation. Not mundane things. Not ephemeral things. And once you can put these things in right perspective, you will see your life shining. You will see your life having the greatness of things. And remember, Second Chronicles chapter 27, verse 6 talking about this man Jotam the Bible says Jotam became great Jotam became mighty why? the Bible says he prepared his ways with God preparation is key you want to become great you want to become excellently relevant in the affairs of life prepare 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 I want you to pray today. Lord, help me. Because first preparation starts from the heart. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1. Preparation of the heart is of the Lord. Everything starts from within. Lord, help me to prepare. Lord, help me. I want you to begin to today to ask the Lord to help you to purify your heart. So that you will not begin to play around. The heart is the main issue. If it is not done in your heart, anything you're doing outside is vain. But when it comes from your heart, it is the heart you communicate with God. It is heart unto heart. Lord, help me to quit sin. Help me. Help me to live right with you. God says, be you holy as I am holy. How can you prepare with God when you are not on the same page with him? I want you to say, Lord, help me today. I am here. I want to submit totally and absolutely to you. I surrender totally and absolutely to you, Lord. Grant me the grace to be a man, a woman of preparation. Oh, Lord, help me 
to affect my family, my family line positively, to affect my neighborhood, my environment positively, to affect my nation and the nations of the world positively, to affect my council, my state, my local government positively. Oh Lord, help me. Help me, O oh Lord, I need your help. Without you, I'm helpless. Without you, I'm helpless. I want you to talk to God. John chapter 15, verse 5 says, without me, you can do nothing. Lord, I don't want to be a, a planless person. I don't want to be a wayfarer in the affairs of life. Lord, I want to plan with you. I want to be somebody who is interpreting your dreams, interpreting your will on planet Earth from my heart. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 6, it says, doing the will of God from the heart. Lord, that is what I want to do, to begin to live a planned life. All your plans, oh God, I want them to be worked out in my life. I want you to pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you today that in the name above all names, you shall no longer live a planless life. In the name above all names, you shall not be distracted from the way God has planned for you. In the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus, I separate you from wasters and destroyers. I separate you from every wrong energy. In the name of Jesus, you shall not make unpardonable mistakes. I decree today that every power that wants you to become a burden instead of a solution to others, I command the power to die in the name of Jesus. And any power killing your health, I kill them today in the name of Jesus. Your joy shall multiply. You shall not count sorrow again. In the name of Jesus, my God shall arise and teach you how to plant on fertile soils. In the name of Jesus, help shall come unto you from above. Help, help from above. Help from below. They shall combine together to make you fulfill your destiny. In the name of Jesus, and every power assigned to waste your money in any form, either in the hospital or useless ventures. I command the powers to die in the name of Jesus. I decree today, regarda proposotoro bracaseteria, that prophetic power that operated in the value of dry bones, beginning from this hour, I connect you to that prophetic power in the name of Jesus. And any power attacking your destiny, I command them to die in the name of Jesus. Blessings that swallow poverty, I release them to overshadow your life in the name of Jesus. Power assigned to kill the glory of your work, I command them to die now in the name of Jesus. Angels of multiplication, wherever you are, wherever you are, begin to visit to this listener now. Begin to visit the works of his or her hands. In the name of Jesus, I decree today, spirit of dryness, I command them to get out of your work. Spirit of dryness, I command them to get out of your progress. Spirit of dryness, I command them to get out of your business, of your career, of your academic pursuits, of your calling and your ministry. In the name of Jesus, powers are signed to make you move from problem to problem. I command those powers to die today. You shall not move from problem to problem. You shall not move from sorrow to sorrow. In the matchless name of Jesus, the King of glory, my Father and my Lord, shall move you from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus, beginning from this hour, you shall continue to wear the garment of the power and the glory of my Father. In the name of Jesus, the glory of God shall illuminate your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I decree today that the ark of glory shall come into your tabernacle. In the name of Jesus, satanic stones blocking your glory. I command them to roll away by fire. In the matchless name of Jesus, whosoever is sending battles to you by the finger of God, I send the those battles back to them. In the name of Jesus, you shall not move from battles to battles to waste you. In the name of Jesus, and every tongue backing up the battle confronting you, I command such tongues to dry up. In the name of Jesus, every mouth gathered to invite trouble into your life, I scatter them today in the name of Jesus. Any junction where disgrace is waiting for you, I decree today 
they shall scatter by fire in the matchless name of Jesus. You shall not make unpardonable mistakes. You shall not miss it in the affairs of life. You shall not deviate from the way of life in the name of Jesus. You shall move from favor to favor. Favor shall overtake favor in your life. Glory shall overtake glory in your life. Godly increase shall overtake godly increase in your life. Psalm chapter 115 verse 15 says, In o prokoshoto zwe The increase of God shall locate you, shall locate your children. God shall increase you. Psalm 71 verse 21. brabadeya. My God shall increase your greatness in the name of Jesus. And he shall comfort you round about in the name of Jesus. I decree according to Second Chronicles chapter 15, chapter Rakato Prokote Zikata, Promoso to Piketeria, Rabako Shoto Pragadeya. I decree verse 15. You shall receive the rest round about. In the name of Jesus, rest round about you. Comfort round about your home. Comfort round about your family. Comfort round about the works of your hands. In the matchless name of Jesus, you shall not sweat for evil. You shall not sweat for nothing. Your labor beginning from today in God shall never be in vain. He said, did I call the house of Jacob to serve me in vain? No. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. God says, I'm not unrighteous not to reward your labor of love in me. God is not unrighteous. I release your labor that have been stolen away. I release them unto you today. I recover your wasted years. You shall not labor for nothing. You shall not labor in vain. Your children shall not be used to punish you. Your work shall not be used to punish you. And any power turning people and things upside down against you, I command the powers to be turned upside down and die in the name of Jesus. And whatsoever have been turned upside down against you, I turn them right side up. Remember, it is loving God. It is loving people. It is Rigada Broshotoro Brabadeya, touching lives positively, and it is serving our God. I am Fresh Fire. We are missionaries on assignment to connect the whole world with His love, God's love, and God's presence. Thank you. Hello there. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations! You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.